Agriculture Month 2015 is currently being observed under the team Exploiting Our Strengths, Advancing Agriculture and Social Protection. In this week's edition of Guyana 411, we look at the agriculture sector, our food import bill, and how technology can both help reduce imports and expand exports. Welcome to Guyana 411. I am Sinika Torn. Stay tuned. Guyana, we produce most of the food we eat, but Guyanese still have an appetite for imported food. Our food import bill has grown to more than $30 billion annually. Through studies and the use of evolving technologies, Guyana is open to reduce that import bill by producing more crops locally, especially those which many thought could not be grown in our climate. You know, although we are uh, food secure and we are a net exporter of food, we also have in Guyana a significant um, food import bill, which is in excess of 200 million, I believe, um, US dollars annually. Of course, significant among, um, among that is wheat and flour, uh, which is about maybe 40, 50 million. Um, corn, soybean for the, feed, for the feed industry, the local livestock feed industry. Together with uh, milk and milk products, some uh, manufactured or what we call canned items, meats, etc., um, canned vegetables and so forth, together with um, some specialty vegetables like cauliflower, sweet peppers, as well as um, spices. The goal is to cut in half by 2020 the importation of these commodities by securing their production locally. Taking up the challenge for such items to be produced locally is among the main efforts of the National Agricultural Research and Extension Institute, NARI, located at Monrepo, East Coast Demerara. Our task is really, as, um, from our end, to look at how we could uh, reduce that importation. We have a number of initiatives um, that we are pursuing, and these are in consonance with what the policy of the government and the Ministry of Agriculture. Principally, we have started activities on commercializing the production of corn and soybean. These activities are being um, done in the intermediate savannas, as well as um, with investors in the, in, the, um, in the Rupununi. The target is that once the investments are in place, we can have significant reductions in those um, importations. Cassava is another commodity which Nari is also giving a lot of prominence to. The focus is not only on increasing production and productivity, but also using this commodity in the baking industry as a substitute for the imported wheat and flour. We are not talking here about telling anybody about using cassava flour, because elsewhere in the Caribbean it is also being used. Barbados does import, as far as I know, cassava flour from Suriname. So we are looking here if we could even have a 5% introduction into the, the wheat and flour for baking purposes. It will make an impact, a significant impact, on the cassava industry in Guyana. Then there is the focus on the local markets for spices and culinary herbs. Nari's cultivation of spices such as turmeric, ginger and black pepper is initially concentrated in Region 1. We would have established that if we take one commodity, for example, let's take um, turmeric. We import turmeric um, from all parts of the world. Approximately, if my memory serves me right, maybe half a million US dollars. We are projecting that by 2020, that, that importation, of course, that the quantity that, we, that would be required be about 150 acres. Currently, we have farmers who are doing about 25, 30 acres. If we were to do that progressively and increase that acreage, that acreage um, incrementally within a five-year period, we should be able to satisfy initially local demands for that one commodity. Guyana imports about 40,000 tons of corn and a similar quantity of soybeans on an annual basis. It also imports close to US $1 million in spices annually. Within the last three years, however, the Ministry of Agriculture has not had to issue any permit for the importation of commodities such as sweet pepper, cauliflower, and broccoli.
Technology is being used not only to advance development of new crops. Traditional crop farmers are also being taught how to grow food efficiently and economically, improving farmers' knowledge of new techniques and technologies in addition to providing them with any physical resources necessary for implementation can drastically increase the farmer's level of productivity. Agriculturists today are focusing more on crop efficiency, ensuring that farmers produce to meet the demands of the market, both in quantity and quality. It is here that the National Agricultural Research Extension Institute, NARI, is aiding local farmers. The Institute is leading in developing pest-resistant varieties of locally grown crops and educating farmers on how to grow crops which were imported a few years ago. Of course you have different varieties huh, of all these different crops. So what we would do initially is to do local, what we call evaluations, and determine the ones that are feasible. Once that is established, we would then have training sessions for farmers, not only here but in the regions as well. Because we know the regions, for example, where people would are accustomed to doing some of these commodities. Together with the conditions, we would establish for them schools, what we call field schools, in the different areas um, um, where these crops are being cultivated. The reception so far has been good from the farmers, especially in Region 5, for some of the commodities like the peppers and so on that we are talking about. And um, they have, and they always have a market. They have not complained to us yet about a market for the produce at this point in time. Periodic training conducted by the various agencies within the Ministry of Agriculture has benefited hundreds of farmers countrywide. It is anticipated that other means of training is being considered to ensure that farmers get the necessary information needed for the development of their farms and produce. Research has shown by focusing on increased availability of food locally, increased income for farmers and increased sustainability of agricultural practices, there is a direct impact on the advancement of the agriculture sector. It is very, very, very crucial and very, very important. That is why we, we, will, we like to engage in media as, as, as often as possible. True, we, have done, we try to do programs on the television, newspapers, and we do have tr um, training materials as well. And together with the um, help of the extension officers out there, because we, the farmers need to know what they need to produce for, the, for markets that exist, because you can't keep producing you know, or traditional commodities, because our, our market here is very small, and that is why we get glut sometimes. So if one, we, that, is, that is our message, the message we want to get to them, produce for what the market requires. People are sometimes hesitant for change, you know, and, and um, they will tell you they don't have the finances. But once we recommend a commodity, we, we provide them, and for farmers initially, we would provide the seed because we would have those, and whatever ne is necessary, because once we do the trading, we provide all the necessaries, but it's fertilize the chemicals. And we also work with them a cost of production, you know, to show them how, how viable, if you get into this activity, how viable it is for them. The fresh approach for the advancement of the agriculture sector will see the use of the emerging technologies, especially in the hinterland area, that is now considered the new frontier for agriculture. The 2015 national budget has allotted $20.8 billion to the Ministry of Agriculture to facilitate the implementation of programs and initiatives to further develop the agriculture sector. The push for a wider variety of locally grown crops and more efficient yields is only one part of the fresh approach to agriculture. This is being complemented by efforts to improve our processing so more value-added products can be produced. Guyana is well known for its vast land space and agricultural activities. And while traditional farming and cultivation have been passed down from generations, new and emerging technologies and markets have pushed the country into agro-processing. This undertaking is aimed at adding value. It involves turning agricultural produce into other semi or fully processed products for markets. One of the main goals of agro-processing is to empower rural farming families to participate fully in the processing of their farm produce, thereby allowing them to earn value-added profits, leading to a better quality of life. It is being projected that we want to see an increase in agro-processed products by at least 20% with, by um, 2020. For, for, for you to do that, you have to have raw materials, especially fruits, and that is why we have been encouraging farmers to get into the production of more fruits, especially like citrus um, and whatever, that 
can be agro-processed. That does not, that also includes commodities like peppers, um, coconuts and so on. Peppers, for example, is in, in, in demand throughout the Caribbean and elsewhere. We, ha we are working with processors at this point in time who are sending out the, not the raw, not the fresh peppers, but um, semi-processed, the mash as we call it. Um, recently, we know of a company that um, would have exported in excess of 40,000 pounds, or, and more recently, another 40,000 pounds. And this is very, very recent information, so we'll see, obviously, an increase in that kind of agro-processed activities. And we want to continue, and we want to encourage the farmers out there that um, markets are available for, for the produce once you produce what, is, what the market requires at this point in time. During the 2050 national budget debates, the Agriculture Minister revealed plans to develop the agro-processing subsector in agriculture. For over the next five years, we will place greater attention on the intensive production of high-value agricultural commodities. Diversification through these high-value commodities will result in higher incomes. Attention will be given to post-harvest handling and agro-processing and value-added technologies. Further, we will advance the ongoing agricultural diversification program with the full implementation of the food and nutrition security strategy. Provide much needed added support to small farmers. Promote large scale investments in agriculture. Expand production of targeted crops and livestock. And improve extension services, marine regulations, and incentives for value added agriculture. Cost effectiveness in production and post harvest management with the latest adaptable technology is necessary. Proper storage, packaging, handling, and transportation must be effective for the agricultural trust to be realized. Agroprocessing facilities for agronomic produce will be located in the proximity of points of production to promote our farm income. Agricultural cooperatives must play a critical role if this is to be realized. Technology is one of the main drivers of improving competitiveness. Technological advancement of the sector will be crucial in improving soil mapping methods, means of attracting investors to inland areas, and means of developing regions away from the coastline. We will work to develop our savannas. We will establish successful models in both the intermediate and Rupanuni savannas that investors, farmers, should adopt. The production of corn and soybean in the savannas will be intensified. Mr. Speaker, Guyana currently imports 60,000 tons of corn and 30,000 tons of soybean yield. As such, these commodities will be utilized as sources of animal feed. The Ministry of Agriculture will not approach diversification narrowly. We will be developing the non-sugar, non-rice agriculture in a commodity value chain approach. Guyana already produces excess fruits. The emphasis now is on adding value to these products. The government plans to emphasize crop diversification in its agricultural development plans. The commodities to be given provenance will be coconuts, cassava, plantain, pineapples, pepper, corn, and soybean. Further, the government is looking at the agro-processing of coconut, since every part of the actual fruit along with the tree can be used to make various products, including oil, milk, craft, broom, and water, among many other items. In some interior areas, the residents bottle coconut water and export this to neighboring Suriname. The Ministry of Agriculture fully supports agro-processing and has pledged technical support such as food science and sanitary and phytosanitary measures, SPS, be provided to increase product line and quality. A Guyana brand will be actively promoted for Guyana's agro-products. A few decades back, Guyana was producing meat for export. That has stopped as the livestock farmers found it difficult to compete with regional and international producers. Could Guyana once again be an exporter of meat? The current efforts by the Guyana Livestock Development Authority will certainly see Guyana on the map again as a meat exporting country. The authority, a semi-autonomous agency under the Ministry of Agriculture, has several initiatives in place for Guyana to meet the international standards and regulations. Over the last couple of years, we've been really bringing in a lot of breeds into the country. For example, we've brought in cattle. Um, some of the breeds we've brought in are like the Beefmaster, the Brangus, the Angus, we've brought in the Brahman. 
But those animals are animals that will put on weight quite quickly once they are fed properly and they're managed properly. The intent of those breeds is not just to ensure we have quality meats on the local market, but to move towards export within the next three to five years. So those are animals that will mature very quickly. You'll have quality meat, and that can be used to target the export market. Among other measures is the establishment of an abattoir that meets global standards, an investment which is open to public-private partnership. As this can be an income-generating venture, one that will create jobs and at the same time making Guyana's meat more eligible for export. The other thing we are looking at too is to improve the nutrition of the animal because without proper nutrition and good breeds, you will not get the type of results you are looking for. So we are pushing a very aggressive pasture development program and in addition to that, we're dealing with supplemental feed, where we're using molasses, we're, excuse me, we're using urea, where we're using rice bran and wheat midland to make a composite ration, which would be used along with quality grass to ensure that the animals put on weight very quickly. The target is to market animals within around 24 months. And we are saying that within that time, the animals should be close to about 1,000 pounds. So those are very quick because in the past, animals, 600 pounds, 700 pounds would take about four years to get to that level. So good genetics, good animal health, good pasture would help us to get to that, to that benchmark. It is believed that capacity building is also essential to this process. And other countries have offered to provide these technical assistance and in some areas technical training. In addition, we are also dealing with capacity building where we have a number of veterinarians coming in from Cuba who would be offering some amount of technical support to the national endeavor. In addition, we have agronomists who would also be dealing with the pasture development program to ensure that all of those things will then fit neatly together to ensure that the objectives we set ourselves in being food secure, nutritionally secure, and to target and to penetrate export markets will be achieved within the not too distant future. People have become more conscious and concerned about accessing safe, wholesome and affordable food particularly food emanating from livestock, and being cognizant of this, the Guyana Livestock Development Authority will implement several other initiatives to ensure that the meat is safer for consumption, allowing Guyana to recommence export of meat. Introducing new technologies into agriculture is seen as the future of the sector. At Gaisuku, the use of bioenergy has proven very successful. It is believed that diversification of the sugar industry is critically needed for the revival and sustenance of the sector. As such, efforts are afoot to add to the industry's list of manufactured goods and services. One of the things the government will be strongly pushing is bioethanol production. When we grow crops, such as rice and sugar, almost 70% of that crop is not used for food. So we're talking about the fronds, the stems, as well as for rice and sugar, the bagasse and the rice hulls, the paddy shells. <coughs> In Guyana, those have tended to, to, to be an environmental problems. Particularly in the rice industry, where where the millers would have vast amounts, mountains of of um, rice hulls or paddy shells and typically what they do with those is they burn them. That burning tends to create pollution, dust, environmental hazards. But those are a, an immense source of energy. Gaisuku has always been an industry that relies on and has had a capacity for biofuel. Whilst Wongna and the Institute of Applied Science and Technology has been producing biodiesel, Albion is the first operation set to go from demonstration to production of bioethanol e-fuel. Gaisuku has the capacity to produce 276 liters of ethanol per day. However, currently the company is only producing 96 per day. We have been working with a number of, of companies, including an Indian company called Pinnacle, um, to an, including uh, a German development organization 
um, GIZ, um, a local forester, to look at commercializing these opportunities in the country. So the idea would be that the biomass is processed using mobile factories where they're compressed into pellets or briquettes so that they can be transported easily to a location where we can then gasify them and produce captive electricity. Um, <clears throat> IST has also assisted significantly in, in um, solar energy projects, just lending our technical expertise during the hinterland electrification program with the Prime Minister's office. And we also have a very active program in biogas production. I should hasten to say that none of these technologies are new. Um, the IAST busies itself with technologies that are appropriate to Guyana and is less concerned about developing new things and more concerned about adapting technologies to Guyana that has already been developed successfully. So in those areas, um, we are very active. We assisted Gaisuko and the Ministry of Agriculture in setting up an ethanol plant at Albion, um, which is, is a very small plant. I, I know much has been talked about it, but really, quite honestly, it's, it's a tiny plant that's just a demonstration. I, my opinion of, of, of ethanol in Guyana is that I'm sure the Commission of Inquiry into Gaisuko, when its results are released, will indicate that our cost of growing and harvesting cane is astro astronomical. Now, it makes good sense to convert sugarcane to ethanol when the price of petroleum is high enough because it takes about four and a half units of energy to create 10 units of energy for sugarcane in terms of ethanol. Those are good numbers. It does not make sense. To, to make ethanol at this stage from corn and other areas because the energy balance is very low. The sugar industry does not only produce sugar. Several byproducts can be produced at every stage of the sugarcane plant. Currently, bulk molasses is used by the Demerara Distillers Limited, DDL. Further, in addition to molasses derived out of sugar, the sugar company is currently looking at what other substrates can be used, for example cassava, in the production of biofuel. Bioethanol, like hydropower energy, is an alternative source of cheap and reliable energy, which is critical for the development of Guyana's commercial sector and also comes in line with the country's quest to fight climate change and global warming. You are watching Guyana 411. Until next time, do remember to keep your head up, be proud Guyanese, and support the restoration of Guyana by keeping your environment clean. Goodbye.